What's up, YouTube? It's Adrian. Let's jump right into it. So let's get straight to the point. Today's video is about how I was in a 32% interest car loan, but I ended up paying $0 in interest on that loan itself. So I don't want to waste your time if you know what I'm going to be talking about. Effectively, what I did was I took a car loan, opened up a credit card with a 0% introductory rate, transferred the car loan onto the credit card, and then paid the credit card off in the allotted amount of time. So if that's something you're familiar with, feel free to click the video, subscribe on the way out if you don't feel too bad. But I hope you appreciate me telling you what the video is about up front. But for everybody else, this is going to be one of the best life hacks you've ever heard. So first things first, if you're somebody with a spending addiction, do not follow this technique. Since we are going to be utilizing credit cards, I don't want to risk you driving down your credit or your net worth even more for a life hack. But if you're living in poverty, this hack can save you hundreds to thousands of dollars in interest payments, and that can completely, in my opinion, turn your life around. So here's a context of the story. My mother purchased a car for me my senior year of college. We came to the agreement that she would pay it throughout my senior year while I was in college, and I would take over payments once I got a job out of college, which was directly after. So at the time, I never asked her what the interest rates were. She alluded to it being 12 to 13%, but I never checked that myself. I should have, and that's completely my fault. Once I started making payments, I realized the headache that I just caused myself. So let's break down the actual loan. The loan itself was $7,997 at 32% for 60 months. I roughly had 48 months left on the payment. So the monthly payment came out to be $273. I like to think on this channel, we're pretty good at math. So for those of you following along, that means I would have paid $16,118 for a car that was worth less than half of that. Uh, side note, I know in my last video I said that this car loan was actually 13% and that's because I remembered it being 13% and that's why I was so upset when I found out it was 32%. Just to double check everything, I did call the loan servicer that we did have the loan with and got the actual numbers that I used in the previous clip. So when I found out that the car loan was not 12 or 13% but actually 32%, I was um, angry to say the least. But anger doesn't solve anything, so I knew I had to figure it out myself. I think it's important to take accountability in situations like this and just go ahead and figure it out. So at the time I was listening to a lot of Dave Ramsey, I have nothing bad to say about him really, but he was preaching how credit cards are terrible for almost everybody. But even though through his hatred toward credit cards, he always mentioned how people get them for cashbacks and introductory APRs, but they end up spending money that they wouldn't have spent, so you end up losing money in the long run. So I started researching what he would call the benefits of a credit card at the time and I found out what credit card churning is and it completely changed my life. So what credit card churning is in the general picture is using credit cards and their introductory rates and cashbacks and points as life hacks in order to get things at major discounts. So once again, Dave Ramsey argues that because you get a credit line, you're more willing to spend money that you otherwise wouldn't have spent if it was through your debit account. So because of that, he claims that you're gonna lose money on the long run. In my opinion, when you're living in poverty and severe poorness, you have to use whatever tools you have available to you. And in this case, I saw credit cards as a tool to get me out of this situation. So here's how I did it. So through my research during the time, I realized that credit cards have three main signup bonuses. The first being cash back of usually 150 to $500 if you spend X amount of money and X amount of time once you sign up for the card. Usually it's $1,000 in the first 30 to 90 days. The second is points that you can use towards flights and travel in order to make future trips you have planned decrease in cost. And the third one, which is typically the least known one and the most useful one for my situation, was a 0% introductory APR for balance transfers. So what that is, is you take a balance or debt that you owe somebody, the credit card company will send a check to that person that you owe the money to, and now you owe the credit card that amount. However, because it's a signup bonus, you pay no interest on that amount for roughly, usually it's nine to 18 months after you make that balance transfer. So people in credit card churning usually look over that third signup bonus because they don't have debt. But for me, this was going to be my golden ticket. But the only issue was my credit score at the time was about 560. I had three uh, medical bills of roughly $60 in collections for 
another video another time. It's awesome. And I never had a credit line besides my student loans. So when you have no history of credit and you just owe people money that you didn't pay them back, which is what a collections is, your credit scores tends to be pretty low. Once again, I was pissed, but I hoped and kind of knew that there had to be a way out of this situation of being stuck in a 32% interest car loan. So the two main reasons, like I said, that my credit score were low was because of A, the collections, there's nothing I could do about that, and then B, not having a credit history. The one thing I could affect was having a credit history. So the easiest way to fix not having a credit history is to open a credit card. That can be difficult if your credit score is low because you're gonna to have to open credit cards that have obnoxious annual fees. Don't ever do that typically, or you won't be able to get a credit card at all. So there's a thing called a secured credit card. The easiest one to get is through Capital One. That's the one I got. What a secured credit card is, is you pay Capital One $100 and they will give you a credit line of $100 back. So essentially, you're loaning yourself a credit line. It's a way for you to prove to banks that you can handle a credit card without them risking losing any money because it's your $100 that funds that credit line. So that's what I got. I got a secured credit card through Capital One. That immediately shot my credit score from 560 to 660. That's something I was able to do because my credit history was so new and so low. So once my credit score rose, I almost immediately started getting credit card offers from both predatory organizations like Credit One and legit banks like Bank of America and Wells Fargo. So from my experience, having a relationship with a bank, whether that be a debit account or a savings account, can dramatically increase your chances of getting credit cards with those banks. Within a month, I was able to get a secured line of credit and raise my credit score to the mid 600s. I then applied to Bank of America's cash rewards card because it had an introductory rate of 0% APR, that's annual percentage rate, the interest that you're going to pay on your principal or whatever you spend that card on if you don't pay it off month to month. The only problem was it was only for a credit line of $3,000. So what I did was I immediately followed up and applied for another Bank of America credit card, this time the Bank of America card, which has a higher percent acceptance rate because it typically doesn't offer the same introductory values that the other Bank of America cards do and the credit line is typically lower. So for that one, I was approved, but for $1,700. So now we're sitting at $4,700 of a line of credit across Bank of America. So let's review. So within two weeks, I was able to secure a $3,000 line of credit that I was able to put $3,000 of my principal onto and pay 0% interest on. I also got a $1,700 line of credit that I could transfer the car loan from onto the credit card, except instead of being at 32%, I would be at 22% better but still pretty bad so what i did was i called bank of america and i specifically asked them if i could combine my credit accounts that would allow me to have forty-seven thousand dollars, and i asked them if it could all be on the account with the introductory apr of zero percent they agreed to it two things here make sure that the question you're asking them is specifically what you want to ask them so for example i asked specifically for the seventeen hundred dollars to go on to the three thousand dollar account and I wanted to make sure that I could use all $4,700 with a 0% introductory APR. I got confirmation both through email and on the phone and I had them put a note on my account when I made that phone call. That's referencing back being anal, like I said in the last video. And the second thing is I did not mention that I just opened the account. Just ask specifically what you wanna ask. This isn't lying. What it is is avoiding going down a rabbit hole that you might not wanna go down because it could lead you astray from where you wanna go financially. So now I have $4,700 with the line of credit. I know this kinda of seems like a shoehorn in, but I had a few thousand dollars saved up from working in college and I was able to take that $4,700 line of credit plus my savings and pay off that car before my first actual payment that would have had 32% interest on it was due. And I just wanna say, if you don't know the details of a balance transfer, that's perfectly fine. All you have to do is call your bank, be specific in the questions, and they will guide you through it. It's not that complicated. You basically just need the name of whoever owns the loan that you owe money to, and then the PO box typically of where you should send that money to. So just to review, we went from potentially paying $16,000 over a five year period to owing $0 on things with interest in just one month. I mean, honestly, what's the point of the story? The point of the story is to always be open-minded and look for ways to solve your problems. 
If I didn't go down that rabbit hole of credit card turning, I would still owe roughly $8,000 on a car that I frankly don't even have anymore because it blew up on me. Another thing is if you have a large debt that you have to pay off that has a relatively high interest rate and you can pay it off within the allotted introductory APR, this is a great way to do it. So there are some warnings to this tactic that I wanna close out with. So the first is I would not suggest doing this if you have a loan with a lower percent interest rate than what the credit card would be. So after that introductory period is over, you're gonna to have to pay the interest rate of the credit card, which is usually between 14 to 28%. So if you have a loan of 12%, don't initiate a balance transfer onto a card unless you're 200% certain that you're going to be able to pay it off within that introductory APR. There's no reason to turn a 12% loan into a 22% loan. I would also be careful to not emotionally feel like the weight was lifted off your shoulder once the balance transfer went through. At the end of the day, you still owe that principal amount of money. It's just gonna be significantly easier to attack it aggressively and save your money and do it efficiently along the way. And something else to be aware of, your credit score is going to take a huge hit when you make that balance transfer if it's a full credit line that you're transferring to. Because credit card utilization, that's the amount of credit you have available to you and then the amount of credit you're currently using is the biggest factor in what goes into your credit score. So if you don't plan on purchasing anything with credit, and honestly at this time you shouldn't be, then this is a great situation. But you need to be aware that your credit temporarily is going to drop by a lot, but it will go back up to where it was pre-balance transfer. It won't have any long-term effects on your credit score. And I promise this is the very last thing. This is something that I just don't want it to be overlooked. If you don't balance transfer the full amount, you're gonna have to make payment still on the previous loan. And depending on the credit card you have, you're gonna to have to make minimal payments towards the credit card. So just keep that in mind. I don't want you to add on to your bills, even though you're saving money. I'll give you a quick example. If you have $1,000 left on your car loan, but you have $2,000 on your credit card, your credit card still is going to require a minimum payment of $50. So you're gonna owe whatever your car payment was, let's say $100 every month until that balance is paid off. But now plus the $50 towards a credit card, it's just going to be what the interest rates of what you pay towards a credit card is 0% and what you pay towards the car is whatever your interest rate was before the transfer. So that's really it. If you found this informative, make sure you like the video, subscribe, it really helps out. I know the last video, I got over 100 subscribers in one day and that motivates me every day to keep making these videos for all of you guys. If you know of anything that I didn't mention in terms of tips and techniques for something similar to this video, leave a detailed comment below so people can come across it. And remember, it may be hard now, but it doesn't always have to be. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.